All right, I've had a short break after my vacation and now I am back to spew bad opinions on the internet for money. Let's do it. Today's video is once again kind of about the Lakers and if not for it being kind of, like you, I would resent it too. But because it's just kind of, I'm still gonna let it slip through the cracks because I'm more so talking about LeBron James as well as the MVP race. As we discussed in a recent video, LeBron James has been on a tear lately and he's only continued to do that to make him look more and more impressive as the season goes along. LeBron has averaged 32 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, 1.7 steals, and 1.5 blocks on 56-43-77 splits, taking 8 threes a game, playing 37 minutes a game. Very recently, he had a 43-14 and 14 game on 72% true shooting. As a result of this streak, LeBron James, who mind you is 37 years old, is averaging the most points per game in his career since 2010 when he was 25. This, however, has resulted in some annoying discourse, specifically around the MVP award. How come y'all were saying that Steph Curry should be the MVP last year as the eighth seed, but now LeBron can't be the MVP as the eighth seed? Yeah, that's a genuine take that I have seen about a dozen times on Twitter now, and it's driving me mad. But really, that argument is just one of many that I've experienced through the years of people changing and contorting the idea of what an MVP is, just so that LeBron James can actually win the award. And this cycle of putting LeBron James at the top of MVP conversations when he's really not there is one that has existed for a long time. That's what we're gonna talk about today. So maybe I fell a couple of subs short of 200K by the end of the year. What am I gonna do, cry about it? Again, that would be a waste of time. But, it would make me happier if you just subscribe so I could hit the damn goal, even if it's going to be like two weeks late. Whatever. Still going to be hitting 200k, and I can live with that. Also, drop a like on this video. It only takes one second, and it makes a massive difference. I'm going to have to change that line soon, because you guys just copy-paste it in the comment section every fucking time now. I mean, it makes you guys like the video, but I don't know, it's kind of funny, so maybe I'll keep doing it. About two months ago, I made a video titled The Endless Cycle of LeBron James Being Washed. And in that video, I talked about how basically since 2018, people have asked, is LeBron washed or even claimed him to be washed? And then it turned out that he wasn't. Ironically, my point in that video has only gotten stronger as once again, he is averaging the most points of his career since 2010. But there is another endless cycle with LeBron. In fact, there are multiple and maybe I'll make a video about it eventually about the other ones, but there's another endless cycle that has existed for a bit longer, I'd say going back to around 2015, at least as far as my memory serves, and that is putting LeBron James not only in the MVP conversation, but saying he should win the award when he very clearly shouldn't. The most prominent examples of this and the strongest cases to me exist in very recent years, partially because NBA Twitter amplifies the worst voices, and I've been doing this for a job, so I have more attention paid to that kind of stuff, but I can't remember it even pre, like, 2018. If my memory is correct, and it very well could be wrong, because it was a long time ago, but people actually tried to do this in 2015. When the race was very clearly between Steph and Harden, and also pretty clearly going to be Steph of those two, the Cavs made a late season push after a really slow start with the new team that was formed in the off season. And with that, there was some discussion there. Obviously there was none in 2016, 2017, no, and 2018. Well, that was a big one. Initially, it was very obviously James Harden. And then there was a late push by LeBron who was carrying the not so great Cavaliers roster to get him that award. And now years later, there are still people who will swear up and down that LeBron James deserved that MVP award, but no, he didn't. James Harden had a better overall regular season, even if LeBron was a little bit more impressive in his second half than James was for the entire year. The MVP award is about the full scope of the year, not just the last 30 or so games, and that's actually a repeating thing here with LeBron. We get to 2020, which is similar to 2019. 2019, LeBron had an actual case for the award, relatively 
speaking before he got hurt and the Lakers season tanked, but even then it was still fairly obvious that the award belonged to Giannis and people were claiming otherwise. Then we get to 2020 and similar to 2018, it was more of a late season push. Giannis was the clear cut favorite, but LeBron went on a roll for a while, had some big games, and suddenly LeBron was the MVP the whole time. And of course, last year there was not much of note there because he missed a bunch of time and the Lakers were not particularly good, so there wasn't really people saying he was MVP other than maybe, maybe early, early in the season. Then we get to this year, and the MVP race is very clearly still a four-man race like I said it was a couple of weeks ago with LeBron looking from the outside. Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Giannis, and Jokic are the top four candidates, and LeBron is not in that tier right now under the present circumstances, or at the very least, if he is in that tier, he's at the bottom of it. I could see an argument that it's a similar situation to Jokic, which is the winning is not there, but the numbers are impressive, and he's very clearly impacting his team, and they win a lot more with him than without him, but, even then, the advanced stats are still heavily in Jokic's favor. I would say that Jokic's numbers are a little bit more impressive, even if uh, LeBron's 37 years old. I'm not going to factor that into the impressiveness of these numbers. And eh, I would say Jokic is just more impactful overall because he's one of the best defenders in the league now and the second best offensive player in the game. So I'd just say he's simply better than LeBron and the Nuggets are a little bit higher in the seed. Granted, it's by like two games, but if you want to make the argument they're in a similar playing field, I can see it. I can see that one. And that being said, Jokic would be fourth on my MVP ballot right now because the Nuggets haven't won enough. Even if it's not his fault, that's the present circumstances. Life isn't fair. Now, in my MVP race video, I did say that LeBron was my dark horse candidate to actually get his way into the top of this award discussion. However, I really had three pieces of logic behind that. One, LeBron's numbers would go up, which is exactly what happened, so there was that. Two, people would find a way to force LeBron in the MVP conversation, even if he didn't really belong, which is exactly what this video is about, so that was actually kind of correct. But the third one for him to actually be the MVP is the Lakers would start winning Winning. And that hasn't happened yet, and I have very little hope at this point that it will. And with him not having that winning to pair with the good play, he's just simply not better than the candidates above him. It's just there's a lot of competition for the award this year, and he's not reaching that level right now. Yes, I said he would be in the conversation, and I'd say he deserves to be in the conversation. However, when people say that, or at least with me, that doesn't mean you think he should be like number one in the award. Like, for example, Bill Russell is in the GOAT conversation. Bill Russell is not the GOAT, and I think you're pretty ridiculous if you suggest that he is, but I also think it's fair to say he's in the conversation. That term doesn't really mean you're at the top of it, it just means like, hey, we're talking about greatest players of all time, throw a bone to Bill Russell. Hey, we're talking about guys who uh, should win MVP, throw a bone to LeBron James. Don't give him the award, but a bone, whatever that means in the metaphor, throw him that. Put him fifth place in voting. I think that's perfectly fine. And as for that bullshit Stephen Curry argument that I've seen a couple of times now, Steph was meant to finish second or third in that award race, and that's exactly what happened. He finished third place in that race. Even though I and many other people said he should be in the conversation, I don't think most of us meant that Steph was supposed to win the award. As someone who I believe is about as big of a fan of Steph Curry as you can be before quite reaching the tipping point of delusion, even though Steph Curry was unbelievable last year at no point that I really think he should win MVP with the Warriors being as bad as they were overall even if he was individually spectacular it's just not how the MVP award has worked historically and you have to base your pick on that precedent if you want to argue the award should have different precedent that's fine but that is a different conversation and until that has changed, LeBron James is not the MVP. And he was not in the examples from previous years. And here's why I'm actually so passionate about this particular conversation. It's not because I really care that much that LeBron doesn't win MVP. MVP means less and less to me every single year. I hate the cycle of hate that comes from this. Because you see where most of the time where hopeless over-the-top fanhood where it's just like dude you are way overdoing it and you're clearly overstating stuff about this player because you're biased towards them that kind of stuff which happens in mass with lebron james results in a pushback from the other end that is equally as delusional loud and wrong 
but it's hateful. And these two collide and it results in the fucking most toxic conversations you'll ever see on Twitter. And it results in LeBron James continuing to be one of the most hated athletes of all time. One of the reasons why LeBron is one of the most hated athletes basketball has ever seen is because he's also one of the most loved ass athletes, athletes, athletes that basketball has ever seen. So you guys on this side doing this are causing this side. And this side should be more mature, but let's be honest, it's not gonna fucking happen. So this side needs to stop, this side will stop by extension of that. I have no hope of this actually working, but this pattern is very frustrating to me and I wish it would stop because it's not fun. It's one of the worst parts of basketball discourse and it makes me want to un 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 un. So yeah, shout out to Rudy for editing this video, but that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and keep the action music. <laughs>